soul that sins shall die. Right. Very clear. The wicked shall be ashes under Jesus' feet. Not immortal souls in hell for eternity. Malachi 4, verse 3. The wicked are destroyed forever. Matthew 10, verse 28. And Obadiah, chapter 16. Mm -hmm. Clear, simple, plain. Immortal souls, heaven, hell, and these things come from paganism. The Babylonian mystery religion, which was adopted uh, uh, wholeheartedly along with uh, 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 goddess worship, uh, Mary, by what we know today as the Roman uh, Catholic Church. Revolution, Revelation 17. Uh, Matthew 16, verse 27. Clearly says that when Jesus comes, his reward, our rewards are with him, not in heaven. So what the hell? And as we read before, we'll, we will be where he is. Well, he ain't going to be in heaven. So we ain't going to be in heaven. How can we be in heaven if we ain't spirit? If we're not immortal. Romans 3, verse 23, all have sinned. Okay? All have sinned. Humans, as I said before have been cut off from God by sin. Isaiah 59 verses 1 through 2. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 5 and verse 25. Unless you're called, you know, all of this false Christianity is explained in Mark 7 verse 7 through 9. Very clearly. Today, as I said before, God's judgment is on His church not the whole world. Okay. <clears throat> His church. Okay? Well, what was the other thing we were looking for? Well, you or already you covered the, 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 the nafish, the, the, the definition of nafish, which is which uh, which animals have. And humans have. The breath of life, the energy that makes us a living being. Uh, animals have the same thing that humans have, except animals will not be resurrected as, no. as, as, as much as we love our pets no. and as much as our pets love us no pets in heaven no sex in heaven no sex no sex well I guess if 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 they are neither male nor female I guess what you don't feel what you don't miss well sex is only a physical human thing true you know. What about uh, eating, uh, being hungry, eat, eating? No buffets in heaven. Nope. Because there's no stomach, no. there's no physical body. No physical Therefore, body. Therefore, your the sensation of... Life is inherent in you. You need not take in any energy. There's no, there's no need for uh, protein, vitamins, minerals, enzymes. Uh, what about water? There's no thirst. No hunger, no thirst, no disease, no need for... Everything you're mentioning now, remember, never medicine. existed. Huh? Never existed. You mean the Garden of Eden? No. All physicality that you're talking about never existed. Now, did Yet the two gods existed. Did Adam and Eve... Uh, the physical thing. Did they uh, have to feed on food for sustenance in the Garden of Eden? Of course. Okay. They were human. But not in the world tomorrow. Uh, the, the, the humans will. The humans. Yeah, they're going to be humans. There's going to be humans left after the Great Tribulation. Right. They will enter into the millennium and be, right. and be uh, you know, ruled over by Jesus now, and the, the, the elect. Now, the spiritual beings that will not need anything from the physical world, would these be strictly the elect? Yes. The 144,000? At that time. What yeah. about all the regular 
everyday humans that have died in the past and, and, and they're resurrected, they will be physical? No. The great white throne judgment does not occur until after the millennium. Okay. And that's when everyone who has ever lived shall be raised up, given a chance to live again physical life, or some will be in a twinkling of an eye turned into spirit. Depends. So there will be both coexisting. Depends who is in the book of life. Oh. Then again, there's another resurrection after those who uh, live their human life in the millennium and then they croak and are resurrected. They either get punished or they get, you know, go on to become God themselves. You mean like uh, people that perish from the tribulation? And, and they might be good people, but they... You know. uh, well, they'll, they'll, they'll be, uh, they will be raised up at the great white throne judgment, probably. Okay, but, but, but is this concept of being raptured and being sucked up in the sky... Only the elect! Only the elect will. And then they come down again! Not the, uh, not the born again uh, fundamentalists that, uh, that repent and, and say that they're, you know, they're covered by, In John, the, by the blood. They keep on saying the blood of Christ, covered by the blood. The blood of Christ blood. has only paid your wages of sin. Mm -hmm. If you have been called and had the Holy Spirit in you. Right. God only knows when you die. When you die, the Spirit in you goes to God. The Spirit in you, the human spirit, the Holy Spirit, if you have it, not the goes to God. Not the essence of what makes you who you are is not going to be flying through the universe. You will be resurrected according to the spirit in you at a later they date. Look at it as if it were something like a CD with all of your DNA and, and life patterns and everything so, on it. It's all on the disc. All on the disc, and it goes to God. The body rots in the grave. Right. The maggots. Taking the dirt. Taking the dirt sleep. Decomposes. Right. So when you get raised up, you get another body for a hundred years. If you are not one of the elect, of course. You get a new body for a hundred years. You live God's way. And you become a God like he is. Or you get boined up in the lake of fire and never to be heard of again. Now, if you had an immortal soul, how could you be burned up in a, in a lake of fire? Bingo! And if you had an immortal soul that flies around, why would you need a resurrection? Why would you need to... to if you're a perfect spiritual being Already. that's flying around, why would you need to become a, uh, a physical body that is vulnerable? Why would you need to go backwards? The promise to Abraham, Isaac, uh, Jacob, etc., Joseph, and Ephraim, Manasseh, the promises were not to go to heaven, but to rule the earth with Jesus. The meek shall inherit the earth, not heaven. These things do not appear in the Bible. And there's definitely nothing in the Bible that supports what the um, right-wing uh, capitalists uh, are always advocating and promoting about the, you know, the prosperity preachers out there like uh, Benny Hinn and Joel Osteen. These are all excuses for the rich. The prosperity preachers? Yes. That's all they are. They are enablers. Enablers to make excuses for those that have. They're trying to... And do not want to give any of that have. They're trying to justify their greed. Yeah. Their hoarding of wealth. They're trying to justify it by making up lies. Who was it? Oh, oh Mid Bible. Midster. Midster. Mitt Romney? Midster. The other day he says, I pay all the taxes that I have to pay and I give a lot to charity. That's what my uncle Phil's told me. 
conservative Uncle Phil told me the same thing you just told me. Mitt Romney said that. This and sort of like justifies him, right? Because he yeah. gives something to uh, charity. He believed it. Look, look, uh, and how about uh, Gates, the same thing? Because he gives a billion dollars or something like this to charity. Listen. Hey, Jay Rockefeller did it. What, Lincoln Center over in New York? They've always done this. Jay Gould, uh, libraries, this, that, and the other thing. All over the place, the rich have always done this well, to justify their greed. Yeah, I mean, and it's, their guilt. it's like photo ops with G.W. Bush and photo opportunity. Well, that guy I was debating with last night, he says what we need is a, is, a, is the Forbes flat tax. I says, <laughs> Forbes flat tax? That will guarantee that the rich won't pay any taxes, and that will guarantee that the middle class will continue to have the burden of taxation. But we did agree on one thing. We, we both agreed that yeah, but that's not the, issue. The, middle, the, the, the middle class small businesses should always be the backbone of the American economy and should never be, should get all the tax breaks and should not carry the tax burden. We agreed on only one thing. But unfortunately, the laws are written differently. For instance, the Institute for Policies, whatever's, just came out with a study about 26, 26 companies, big, big companies. They don't pay any stinking taxes. Nope. The laws are written so that they get away with this, that, and the other thing. Ba 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 ba. Mm-hmm. This is the this is the fairness. You know, going to the top all the time. Siphon up economics. Never trickle. That's trickled. what's been going on since since even before the heydays of Reagan. Forget about trickle down. It was never meant to to be. Never meant to work. Now you were talking about the. You were talking about what is the final outcome because uh, 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 we don't have time to get into the end time prophecy mm. and, and everything that's a whole other Romans 2 verse 13 Acts 5 32 this should dispense with this things you're getting from these false counterfeit Christians doers of the law are justified well if got doers of the law and we're required to be doers of the law, how could it be done away with? How could it be nailed to the cross? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, remember one thing. Yeah. The truth can get you killed. John 8 Verses 30 through 31 and verse 40. 43 and 44. And it has happened many, many times. The Catholic Church itself killed 50 million people trying to convert them by the sword. Yeah, well, they heard about um, uh, European... Uh, Colonialism, colonialism in uh, the New World was about. Uh, I noticed gold. Uh, you know, whether it be uh, uh, the Battle of Little Bighorn, uh, U.S. Army against the Lakota Sioux Nation, uh, whether it be uh, the travel westward by the pioneers. They heard about gold. Uh, whether it be the uh, uh, Spanish conquistadors, uh, uh, Cortez and Pizarro, stealing the land from the Indians because they heard about gold. So, you know, this whole concept of greed and um, uh, corporatism and profit over people is not new. No, it's not new. And let you me know, just, before I forget. The King of England, imperialism in England. Before I get forget, let's get back to your 10% tax across the board. You mean the flat tax? Flat tax. Well, it ain't mine. For it's, everybody. It's uh, the, the, the fat cat. Well, like let's just see how fair it is. Forbes. Yeah. Okay. You make a million dollars. Yeah. No, let's go. You make a billion dollars. Because that seems to be what all the big companies today make. Billions. Billions in profits. And okay. they still don't pay any taxes. And don't want to pay any taxes. Okay. Let's say you make a, a billion dollars. 10% tax. You're left with nine hundred billion. I mean, million. nine hundred million dollars. You're left with, right? Sure. Guy makes ten thousand dollars, pays ten percent tax. 
He's left with 9,000. That doesn't sound fair. Where's the fairness? It's not fair. Of course it ain't. The progressive tax system is the fairest of all. But of course the propaganda coming from the Republicans and corporations and etc. Oh, God forbid, you are punishing the job creators. Yeah, in China. The producers. The job creators in China and in, in, in third world countries, not in the United States. Of course not. Oh yeah, so if somebody is greedy and has the bucks and they don't give a shit about anybody else but themselves, they are going to be in favor with the Forbes flat tax and they will vote Republican. If you're selfish and you're greedy and you're materialistic and you have big bucks socked away. And believe me, if they did not have the <coughs> social religious nut stuff on their side, they wouldn't get anybody to vote for them. But, but since they cannot vote for a demon crack, mm -hmm. you know, who left they vote yeah, for? But they ain't gonna vote for an old Rocky Anderson, Jill Stein, Dr. Bill, or any of the other independent runners. Ralph. Have Ralph, you ever heard of these people? Ralph Nader. Yeah. Ralph Nader. Ralph Nader. Well, he's not running this time. Oh, okay. But there's like seven uh, independents running. You ever hear any? You ever see any on debates? You ever. Nothing! Except when Gar Gary Noll had Rocky Anderson He's on. He's only one show! That's one show. Yeah. People don't know him. They're not The mainstream media don't uh, do this stuff. They're not household uh, words, these independents. Uh, you know, and uh, the media, of course, gives lots of face time to Republicans. You know, and, well. they, and they give, and they admire, you know, anytime. Uh, uh, Bill Gates has something to say, you know, they're all, all the news people have big smiles on their faces and oh. listening to him so carefully oh, and, yeah. you know, and, you know, uh, Donald Trump. The oh, rich know so much. Yeah. Oh, Donald Trump, he's a, he's a sage. He's a guru. He's a, he's a, he's a soothsayer. Well, you know what these, you know what these uh, lemmings uh, that are not even in a high income tax bracket that vote Republican, I don't know why they do. You know what they, they, how they think about um, millionaires, billionaires, and, and corporate CEOs? They figure they're filthy rich, so they must be doing some things right. Otherwise, they wouldn't be successful. So my answer to this, these people that debate me and aggravate me on the Internet, my answer to them is, did you ever hear of the term ill-gotten gains? Well, you don't even have to go there. But you're talking about the devil's world. Yeah. So what does it mean if you have succeeded in the devil's world doing things the devil's way? So what? Right? Yeah. So well, what? Well, Ken told me. Ken create. You can't take it with you. Ken create told me if you, if you are, are an entertainer in the entertainment industry and you're into partying and getting high and uh, and and being ruthless and you know. Uh, backstabbing your way to the top oh you'll you'll become a big star quick but if you're into being a nice guy and being honest and everything yeah well that's that goes everywhere yeah you'll you'll get blackballed I mean you won't really go anywhere you know but the, now since we did a very educational show this week as opposed to reading articles do you have I one an article right here one particular article that suits suits your fancy I mean that that well it's not my fancy but it's on my pile it's first on my pile but it's first on your pile and look at this pile well I mean is it first on your pile because you thought I don't know it's first on my pile because I just took it out today oh so it's like I, it's brandy new it's, like it's hot playing, it's, Ooh, it's so hot man it's, it's right like, off the griddle so it's like playing play, so it's like playing poker <laughs> whatever's on top is on top yeah I could make a joke about that. All right. I voted for Governor Christie. Oh, not you. you and mean, I retain my membership in the Republican Party. This idiot that wrote the article. I'll be right back. I have to go to the men's room. I find it impossible not to express my growing dissatisfaction with the governor's irresponsible and foolish cheerleading about the condition of New Jersey's economy and his frankly childish put-downs of his critics. No serious or responsible observer 
can legitimately claim that New Jersey's economy is either good or recovering. We stand at a at or very near the bottom of the states in terms of job creation. The business climate in New Jersey is deemed miserable when compared to that of most other states. Our tax burden is at or close to the top and the amount of unfunded pension liabilities is, per capita, among the highest in the nation. So, to my surprise, is the percentage of homes in foreclosure. This pathetic condition is the product of the bipartisan coalition that has run this state into the ground. Going back to the days when state government grew far beyond the inflation rate under Governor Thomas Kane, followed by later Governor Christy Whitman, irresponsible tax cut, and her casino bet that unrealistic stock market results would cover the growing pension gap. Well, Christy Whitman is the one that tried to privatize the division of motor vehicles, and that was a fiasco and make up for tax income losses, followed by the shenanigans of J Governor James McGreevy, and more recently, Governor John Corzine. McGreevy? I thought he was a good man. Who had close personal ties with the boss of a major public employees union. So clearly the fault for what is happening today does not rest with Christie, but he does residents no good to trumpet the existence of an imaginary Potemkin-like rosy economy where the all too obvious warts are covered up by optimistic scenarios coupled with rants against those who take issue. At this point, I don't care who Christie's critics are. The citizenry needs to be told the truth by whoever is willing to do so. You may be sure that Christie would not be cutting any slack to President Obama were he to make similarly absurd claims as he does. Well, Christie did not, first of all, Christie did not uh, live up to his campaign promises of cutting taxes for the middle class, but he did make uh, live up to his promises for not taxing his rich buddies. And, and of course, he... Well, he wants to give them more. Give more tax breaks for the yes. rich. Yes. And, you know, of course, being that he is an obese glutton, he, uh, he was quick to close food pantries for the homeless in New Jersey. And he wants to, of course, all Republicans want to close, like Planned Parenthood and end all welfare and, and even Social Security. Anything Social that helps the little guy. Anything that helps the poor, single, mo single mothers, the little guy. Look, look, a little history. They want you to die. All of these programs, most of them, came about under FDR. Right. Franklin Delano Roosevelt now, was the greatest president that has ever been. Elected four times. Four times. No other president has ever been elected. Four, four terms? Times. Four terms. So that means 16 years? He didn't live out the last He time. didn't live it out, but he was elected. And, and didn't he play a big role in uh, in, in regulating corporations? Yes, regulating. that was my point. I'm going to get it okay, there. Okay, okay, go ahead. So the Great Depression came about, 1929. He presides over the Great Depression, which lasted late, they say, until World War I, which, by the way, was fought on a credit card and price control. Republicans. Anyway, let's give the benefit of doubt here. Let's give them maybe it lasts in 10, 12 years. Obama's got a financial crisis that nearly crushed the United States and other countries and they're not even giving him four years to do us, to help us get out of it. George Bush caused it all. And it's all Obama's fault now. Who inherited it. The who mess. inherited it all. And, and who 
who accurately, whereas George Bush did not, George Bush did not put the two wars, Medicare Part D, on the government debit, uh, credit card. Obama did. And that's why the deficits are out of sight. But don't people realize that we have a Republican-controlled Congress? Yes, and everything that Mr. Obama tries to do to stimulate the economy, they stop it at every turn. Of course. Christmas, Mitch McConnell said it, the turtle! He said it clearly! Again, this is another example. The Bible states things very plain and very clearly, but people don't understand it because they're deceived. Well, Mitch McConnell put it right out there. Oh, the, tur the turtle head Bitch McConnell, the turtle face, he looks like a turtle. Bitch McConnell? Yeah. We are going to make Obama a one-term president. Yeah, well, I he mean... He will get nothing. I mean... Obama being responsible for all, all of our for all of our problems is like putting the total blame on a baseball manager for not winning the World Series. I mean, the manager's not on the field hitting and fielding. You know what I mean? It's like he and has to. What can the president do for the economy? I, I mean, you got a Republican Congress that has to approve or disapprove what Obama wants to do, and then you have the Senate. You said there's not enough Democratic votes in the Senate to, to override. override. Oh, see, you see, and, but these idiots out there, these lemmings, are quick to blame Obama for everything. Yeah. <clears throat> this letter writer listed President Obama's accomplishments. Well, here is my list. Now here comes the criticism. Federal spending up almost one trillion dollars. And as I just said, where did that come from? It came from George W. Bush. Because they didn't put it in the budget. The two wars, Medicare Part D. They didn't put it in the bu budget. Of course, it was a continu continuing resolution. Of course the Pentagon <laughs> sucks up a lot of money. Oh God forbid you can't cut the you can't cut the Pentagon. But these right wingers are insisting that social services make well, up. Well, those you can cut. Make no, they say that they're making up the the bulk of our spending. No, they're not. Social services. I says that's a lie. When you add everything up, it's a lie. When you add everything up, the spending for the military is one point trillion dollars. No other country spends even a hundred billion dollars on its military. No other country. No other country in the world. Who are we afraid of? That's true. You know what else the right wings is, uh, ring, right wingers were saying last night? That the term 1% uh, applies to how many wealthy people are in the entire world, not the United States. We're dealing with the United States. This is it. the United States, the 1%, right? And the 1% is something like 440 households. See how they lie through their teeth, the right-wingers in, in America, the ass-kissers, the lemmings? The yearly deficit from $642 billion to $1.7 trillion. The federal debt up from $10 trillion to fifteen. Well, now it's uh, over sixteen. dollars going to be $17 trillion. More than one million home foreclosures. Poverty at 15.1%, the highest rate in 28 years. Again, is this Obama's fault? No. What did we do? Do we have amnesia for the eight years of George Bush when not, not one net job was created, yet you heard nothing about the unemployment rate? That's true. Of course it's true. The unemployment rate is much higher than what the government tells you. People gave up there and, they, and, their, and their federal extensions uh, were, ran out. Oh, by the way, the federal extensions were reduced. They were cut. 76 weeks instead of 96. And since there's no jobs in the United States... And oh, wait a minute! There's <laughs> enough jobs for people on welfare! Where? You gotta put them to work! There's not enough jobs, period! <laughs> oh, come on now! What are you doing? Siding with those lazy bastards? Hey, the 350,000 people with PhDs that, that, that can't find a job... You, what you, about the 8 million people that on the H-1 uh, 
H one B workers visas. Who came in here to to at one third the cost uh, take jobs well, away from highly skilled uh, United States citizens? Well, that's uh, like reverse outsourcing, Bill. Yeah, we're bringing it back now. They're, you're we're bringing it in. You're outsourced because you're you're greedy, and you reverse outsource. You insource the H one B because <laughs> you're greedy. Either way, they get cheap labor. You know. You know, it's like Microsoft bragging that they got so many IT professionals from India and they're saying, you know, we're happy, but they don't give the real reason is, is simply because they're paying these poor souls Remember, less, a lot less money. All of this they get away with because they had the lobbying money to change the laws. Right. All we need to do is change the laws back. And That's I, all we need to do. And I would tariff the hell out of the products that come back to the United States from outsourced jobs. Tariff the hell out of them. And break up all the big corporations. All the big banks. Break them up. Bring competition back to America. Competition? Again. What is that? That's the old days when, when America depended on Main Street, local Main Street, and not Wall Street. Ah. Small businesses, mom and pop shops, our entrepreneurialism. Ah. Yeah, that, that's a lot of competition. President Clinton and the foolhardy Democrats and Republicans in Congress goofed when they rescinded the Glass-Steagall Act. An FDR bill that regulated big banks and led to six decades of growth for the middle class. It is time to bring back Glass-Steagall. Yes. Which prohibited banks from engaging in investment activities and investment institutions from engaging in banking activities. When the current crisis started, many should have called for social justice first by pressing President Bush or Obama and members of Congress for a mortgage foreclosure halt. Instead, the government focused on saving the big banks. Once a great spiritual leader rid a temple of money changers and lenders, setting a precedent on what is right and what is indeed wrong. Remember who that spiritual leader was. Jesus! When he threw out the money changers from the temple. The original Occupy Wall Street protester. Ooh. The time has come for modern spiritual leaders to push for a covenant of social justice. Part of that covenant would be to push for reinstatement of Glass-Steagall. Okay. Um, wish. Okay, that, that's good.